สถานีวิทยุสรารดม AM 1575การทูตเพื่อประชาชนเพื่อไทยก้าวไกลทันโลกสำหรับคุณความยั่งยืนคืออะไรสิ่งแวดล้อมที่อุดมสมบูรณ์เพื่อคนรุ่นต่อไปอากาศที่บริสุทธิ์น้ำที่สะอาดและเพียงพอต่อความต้องการอาหารไม่ขาดแคลนหรือสังคมที่ให้โอกาสคนทุกเพศทุกวัยและยอมรับความแตกต่างสังคมที่ไม่ทิ้งใครไว้ข้างหลังอีก20ปีจากนี้คุณอยากส่งต่อความยั่งยืนแบบไหนให้แก่ลูกหลานของเราเศรษฐกิจสีเขียวที่ขับเคลื่อนด้วยเทคโนโลยีและนวัตกรรมใหม่สังคมที่ปลอดภัยจากภัยคุกคามทุกรูปแบบสังคมที่มีความเชื่อมโยงถึงกันทั้งทางด้านคมนาคมขนส่งและการสื่อสารไม่ว่าจะเป็นแบบไหนอาเซียนออกแบบได้ด้วยมือคุณมาร่วมกันสร้างอาเซียนให้ยั่งยืนไปด้วยกันนะคะสวัสดีค่ะ and good afternoon welcome to news and views and of course you're still here with me สวัสดีค่ะประชุมญาต first of all um, I would like to apologize because I'm a little sick so my voice is kind of muffy in a sense um, so do bear with me for the next half an hour with my muffy muffy voice and all that but yes um, I am doing a little better I've been sick since last week but hopefully I'm not going to cough throughout the sh- um, throughout the show so hopefully that um, You're not going to hear me cough through the show. Anyways, um, of course, news and news is on air every Monday from 6 to 6:30 p.m. on uh, Sarandrom Radio. Uh, if you like to turn the knob, uh, you know, listening to the nas- the traditional radio style, it's on AM 7 um, 1575 gigahertz. And you can also listen back to all our programs which have been on air before, right here on our webpage as well. Or if you like online streaming, we do have online shows as well on the um, ThailandRadio.in.th, so you can listen back. To that, so we have a lot of shows right here. Not just my show, but a lot of shows about everything that you need to know about foreign affairs, about everything about other countries as well. So be sure to check out all other programs right here on Sarandrom Radio. And of course, the weather—it has been raining a lot lately, actually. So looking ahead, I think we're going to see more rain. So hopefully, it's not going to be as bad as on Friday because, as you know, Bangkok was actually flooded. For a bit there on Friday, and traffic was quite bad. I, it took me about half an hour just to get home, and I left the ministry at around um, 15 minutes before seven, which shouldn't be too bad anymore because I don't live that far away. But it still took me half an hour just to get home. So hopefully, it won't be a, as bad uh, again if it rained today, which is kind of cloudy already. Black clouds are coming, and everybody is probably. I'm planning on how to get home soon. So if you are going to be out there in the rain, be sure to pack an umbrella, uh, a raincoat, anything that you need, just you know to wait through the water, just in case. You'll never know when it's going to rain. And of course, with the changing weather, um, I don't want any any of you to get sick. So be sure to take good care of your health because it's been hot and cold on and off, and that's I think one of the factors as of why I'm kind of. Um, With the flu right now, so hopefully it's not going to get any worse. Even though I've been coughing a lot, but I have been ta- I I have taken my shots. I have my meds, and um, of course my co- uh, coughing syrup. So hopefully it will improve in the next day or two. Right, front page of the Bangkok Post. It says here that bomb disposal officers examine an unexploded WW World War Two rather era bomb found underground between the Khao Tao and Wang. Pong train stations in Bajok Hirikhand, Branburi district, uh, and there are a graphic shows suspension bridge in Rashaburi buoys are moored on the Maklong River, Maklong River to mark the spots where an exploded ordnance is located, and it says here the evacuation mauled after W two World War Two explosives discovery. Now residents living in downtown Rashaburi may soon be ordered to evacuate their homes, as authorities prepare to defuse seven World War Two era unexploded bombs found on the bed of the Maklong River. Now the bombs were first discovered by the State Railway of Thailand workers who were working on the first phase of the double track rail upgrade 
project between นครปฐม and ชุมพร Now another bomb was found buried between k h a u t a และ w a n g p o n g train stations in Bajokirikan's b r a n b u r i district. SRT acting governor w a r a w u d m a l a said there is a possibility more unexploded ordnance may be discovered as the project moves on to its second phase, which will see works carried out between c h u m p o n and Songkla. An administrative order could be issued to cordon off the central parts of Rashaburi's m e u n g district to ensure everyone's safety as authorities attempt to safe, safely retrieve and defuse the explosives. Said Mr. Waterwood, the SRT's acting governor added, "A blast could damage structures that lie within a two-kilometer radius of the epicenter, which include military camps, temples, markets, schools, the city hall, as well as numerous homes." We will meet on Friday to decide on the best course of action," said Mr. Waterwood. Experts from Germany will be invited to assist because retrieving unexploded underwater ordnance requires a high degree of technical expertise," he said. Various methods have been considered to safely dispose of the bombs, but the most suitable way is to destroy them underwater," he said. A high-powered water pump will be used to separate, separate the fuse and the explosive chamber to prevent chemicals from each part. From coming into contact with each other, now which could cause it to explode, because of the ordnance discovery, a suspension bridge will be built across the m a c l o n g River instead of a conventional bridge, as it requires no foundation pillars in the river. This will be the first suspension rail bridge in the country and a new landmark of Rashaburi," said Mr. Waterwood. According to a source and at the Transport Ministry, the ordnance are 1,000 p o u n d general purpose or GP bombs. The bombs were dropped during the Allied air raids in Rashaburi after Japanese soldiers invaded Thailand in 1941. Hopefully, that will go well and no one will get hurt. Um, it's actually quite frightening that uh, the bomb, which is what. Um, It's 2019 now. The second, the World War II ended in 1945. It's about 70 years ago, and the bomb is still kind of alive in a sense, and is actually very, very scary. And it, there are two pictures inside on page four uh, for um, today's Bangkok Post, and it says here that no more free flows. So a kitchen hand uses tap water to wash dirty dishes at a side store. By the end of this year, City Hall will require Bangkokians living in 21 districts in the capital to pay wastewater treatment fees. Um, I've been kind of reading about that, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to increase the monthly water usage or fees by about 50 baht for per household. So hopefully. That will actually improve the wastewater management that we have right here in Bangkok, even though it's going to be a burden for some of the, you know, households. But hopefully, that will be better for everyone, not just living in the 21 districts, but apart those who are living further away as well. So hopefully, <clears throat> that will be the best course of actions. Even though I'm not sure if that's going to work or not, but we'll soon see. And there is a picture of a little girl right here, a Japanese little girl, looking at a train, a model train actually. And it says here that a girl studies a model train during the Japanese Rail and Model Thailand 2019 event, which educated visitors on Japanese rail systems at the AKX Knowledge Exchange Building on g r u n g t h o n b u r i Road. But she's really cute. Ja- I don't know. Um, children from all, children from everywhere around the world are actually very, very cute. No matter if they're dark skinned or tan skin or white skin or just you know, um, Asian looking, they're all so cute, right? But their children, it's just like baby animals, I suppose. It's the same thing. Like baby tigers are cute, but you know they get dangerous. They get very, very dangerous when they get older. But you know when they're cubs, they're very, very cute and cuddly. But hopefully, I don't know if we can actually tame wild animals, but they're not supposed to be tamed in a sense. I guess it's. A perfect place for them to live in the wild. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad thing that if you want to raise them as a pet, but I mean they're wild animals. I suppose it's just better for them to live in the wild, right? Some more updates right here. Now, explosion rocks fire factory, fireworks factory. An explosion rocks a small fireworks factory engulfed it with the fire in Moon District of l a m p o n yesterday. Now, firemen were alerted of the explosion at 12:20 p.m. shortly after the factory, which is in the middle of Long and Orchard was reduced to rubble by the explosion and the ensuing blaze. Now authorities sent three fire trucks in an attempt to douse the fire. The owner of the factory, Sayan Bali, 49, was seriously injured by the explosion and subsequent fire. 
He was immediately sent to Lampoon Hospital to be treated by a team of doctors. Um, and also, taxi driver faces four charges. Now, the Land Transport Department has fined a taxi driver who allegedly injured two Korean passengers after they told him to turn on the meter. Now, it charged Tanat Tirapong. Tanati Rapong with at least four counts of criminal offences, acting impolitely, ignoring the use of the fare calculating device, not driving passengers to a destination and using an expired driving license. Each of them incurs maximum fines of between 1,000 and 2,000 baht. The department is also working with Suti San police on other ac accusations against the driver. Mr. Tanadet, whose license expired almost 10 years ago, was accused of hitting the female passengers with a metal bar and snatching their smartphones on June the 3rd, but he argued he did not. He did it out of a quarrel over the taxi meter, according to Taxi Report social networking site. Hopefully that will solve itself soon. And hopefully that the passenger did wasn't wasn't seriously injured, but hit, being hit with a metal bar is kind of going over the top. Alright. Uh some world updates right here. Thousands turn up as Caracas reopens border. This is in Venezuela. Um, several thousand Venezuelans, des desperate for food and medicine, packed a border crossing to Colombia on Saturday, hours after President Nicolas Maduro partially reopened it. Mr. Maduro had the day prior ordered the re had the day prior ordered the reopening of the Venezuelan border in the western state of Tashira near the location in Colombia where the international community has massed mass humanitarian aid that Mr. Maduro's government refused to take. Early on Saturday, thousands of people rushed to the border bridges between the two countries and crowds in long queues stretched throughout the day. My two daughters of dengue, they have a fever and I had not, and I had to come to get to get care to in Colombia, says Belki Rangel, 34, about to burst into tears after waiting three hours with her two daughters, five and eight, to cross to Cucuta. At midday, 18,000 people had crossed the border from Venezuela and 8,000 from Colombia. And the head of the migration service in Colombia, Christian Kruger said, Kruger said, Before the border closed, it closed in February, about 30,000 people crossed the Simon Bolivar International Bridge every day. From San Antonio del Tachira, Venezuela, to Cucuta, official data shows. But containers deposited on the Venezuela Venezuelan side to prevent any entry of humanitarian aid, considered by the government a potential pretext for foreign military intervention, were still in place. They have not moved the containers at all. It is so hard getting across. There are so many people on the, Venez Venez on the Venezuelan side, said Carlos Julio Perez, 55. He waited hours to go to a medical appointment on the Colombian side. When the border was closed, Venezuelans crossed via hidden trails linking the two countries, putting themselves at the mercy of armed groups. The economically devastated South American nation is suffering from shortages of food, medicine and other essentials, amid a power struggle between socialist Mr. Maduro and opposition leader Juan Guaido, who has been recognised as interim president by more than 50 countries, including the United States. Announcing the reopening of the frontier on Twitter, Mr. Maduro said, in quotes, We are a people of peace and that strongly defends our independence, and self-determination. The leader, however, did not say if other key border bridges closed since August, 20, August 2015 after two Venezuelan soldiers were wounded by suspected smugglers would be unblocked. More than three million Venezuelans have, that, has left, have left their country since 2015 to flee the worst economic crisis in the oil-rich country's recent history. All right, that's some updates from Bangkok Post right here. It's about half time, so let's take a short break. I'll be right back, so do stay tuned. กีฬาวอลเลย์บอลสอนให้เราได้เรียนรู้ถึงคำว่ามิตรภาพและการทำงานเป็นทีมเพราะทุกๆคนในทีมคือผู้เล่นที่สำคัญและมีหน้าที่สนับสนุนซึ่งกันและกันเราต้องใช้สองมือของทุกคนเพื่อสร้างทีมให้แข็งแกร่งและประสานใจของผู้เล่นทุกคนให้เป็นหนึ่งเดียวเช่นเดียวกับประชาคมอาเซียนนอกจากการร่วมมือร่วมใจกับประเทศสมาชิกเพื่อก้าวไปสู่เป้าหมายที่ตั้งไว้แล้ว
เรายังต้องร่วมมือกับประเทศคู่เจรจาและประชาคมโลกเพื่อร่วมกันผลักดันเพื่อแก้ไขปัญหาร่วมกันเมื่อเราร่วมมือร่วมใจชัยชนะก็จะอยู่ไม่ไกลเกินเอื้อมในโอกาสที่ประเทศไทยดำรงตำแหน่งประธานอาเซียนในปีนี้พวกเรานะักวอลเลย์บอลหญิงทีมชาติไทยรู้สึกภูมิใจและอยากเชิญชวนให้คนไทยทุกๆคนร่วมภูมิใจไปกับเรามาร่วมมือร่วมใจกันสร้างอาเซียนให้ยั่งยืนไปด้วยกันนะคะเคยคิดกันไหมว่าในอีกไม่กี่ปีข้างหน้าเมื่อเราก้าวไปสู่ดิจิทัลอาเซียนแล้วเนี่ยเราจะเป็นยังไงกันบ้างชีวิตก็คงจะสะดวกสบายมากขึ้นมีหุ่นยนต์คอยช่วยทํางานเราน่าจะอายุยืนมากขึ้นนะเพราะในอนาคตคงจะมีนวัตกรรมทางการแพทย์ใหม่ๆที่ช่วยวินิจฉัยและรักษาโรคที่หลายแหล่งได้ดียิ่งขึ้นเราน่าจะได้สูดอากาศที่บริสุทธิ์มากขึ้นนะเพราะว่าในอนาคตเนี่ยจะมีการใช้พลังงานทดแทนแล้วก็นวัตกรรมที่เป็นมิตรสิ่งแวดล้อมมากขึ้นด้วยถึงตอนนั้นน่ะก็ไม่ต้องพกเงินสดแล้วเพราะว่าทุกอย่างอ่ะทําผ่านออนไลน์ได้ไปต่างประเทศอ่ะก็ไม่ต้องแลกเงินแล้วแหละเราไม่กลัวจะตกงานกันบ้างหรอถ้าหุ่นยนต์สามารถทํางานแทนเราได้อะเทคโนโลยีมีประโยชน์มากนะแต่ก็มีข้อเสียเหมือนกันถ้ามนุษย์ปรับตัวไม่ทันเราก็ต้องพัฒนาตัวเองให้เท่าทันเทคโนโลยีอยู่เสมอมีความคิดสร้างสารรค์กล้าคิดต่างแบบมีเหตุผลแค่นี้ก็ไม่มีอะไรมาแทนที่ความสามารถของเราได้อย่างแน่นอนเตรียมตัวให้พร้อมเพื่อก้าวสู่ดิจิทัลอาเซียนกันนะคะSo welcome back to the second half of news and views. And right as you know, we are Thailand is the ASEAN chair this year, and of course the ASEAN 34th ASEAN summit is coming up, and it's from the 20th until the 23rd of June, which is next week already. So just to give you a heads up and what is coming up right here for our ASEAN chairmanship this year. All right, back to the things of updates at hand. So if you are around Bangkok and other provinces in Thailand this week, there are some things for you to do right here. So um. There's a sale by OfficeMade featuring special prizes on office supplies, translation equipment, and electronic items at the promotional hall B floor of Future Park, n a n g s i t p o n Yotin Road, and it ends today. So it's a bit tough for you to go out there if you live in the city to go to Future Park, r a n g s i t So I'm guessing that's not a good idea for you guys to do. But anyways, the coronation ceremony and celebration exhibition featuring 88 photos portraying the historic moments of the royal coronation ceremony captured by veteran photographers at Siam Paragons Hall of Fame Rama the First until June the 16th. So if you need further information, do call the 02612 sorry 610 8000. Sense of place: A photo exhibition reflecting the mood and atmosphere of several places by famous photographer p i r a p a t w i t m o n r u n g k a r a t A.K.A. at Candid at Laika Gallery, Bangkok, second floor of Gazon Village on p l u n g e t Road until June the 16th as well. Sorry, uh, you can visit Facebook.com and Laika Gallery, Bangkok for more details. And o t o p Thailand Fair for those of you of you who like to shop for o t o p things, featuring outstanding community products from across the country at Future Park until June the 17th. And okay, this is Art and the Crowned Heads, a solar exhibition by s a r a Wood, y a s a m u d at Galleria Adler, Bangkok on z o r a n g r o o n 45 until June the 28th. And then there's Future Park and Espel Grand Splendor X2, offering discounts of up to 70% at 1,000 stores within the shopping center, plus a chance to win a BMW X1 18i iconic car for every 1,000 baht spent at Future Park and Espel Pahon Yotin Road until July the 7th. So there's a chance for you to win a new car, and say kimchi, an exhibition on kimchi and its history at Korean Cultural Center between Sukhumvit 15th and 17th, and this will be on until July the 12th. So for full more details, call 0 2 6 5 1 0 1 6 5 2 8 From Monet to Kadinsky, an immersive multimedia exhibition featuring selected masterpieces by 16 masters of modern modernism at RCB Gallery of River City, Bangkok. j e r e n g r o o n 24, and this will be on until July the 31st. Visit facebook.com rivercitybangkok or rivercitybangkok.com for more details. An anthology arts exhibition, exhibition oil featuring sorry, featuring oil paintings that reflect on world history by w i r a p o n g s i t r a k u n k i t j a k a n with part of the proceeds going to the Priest Hospital Foundation. And this will be held at the s k a l of the Ascentra Grand Central World on Rasadamri Road until August the second, and admission is free. For more details, do call zero two, 
um, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, extension 6, 7, 3, 5, sorry, 5, 3, and 2, 6. And... Uh, and the children recall World War II, and that's in Phuket. An exhibition on the effects of the Pacific War in Phuket at Museum Phuket until December the 31st. And if you are vintage car lovers, um, there is an exhibition right here. And it says that Future Park and Next Spell together with the Vintage Car Club of Thailand are hosting the 43rd Glossy Heritage Awards. Held under the theme, the Aesthetics in Aerodynamics, more than 100 vintage cars will be on display from June the 12th until the 16th on the ground floor of Future Park and Espel on Pehon Yotin Road. The event gives visitors the opportunity to admire the beauty of more than 100 vintage and classic cars on show in the 5,000 square meters space at Kaskata Spotlight and a live park hall. This year we'll see genuine European sedan and sports vehicles and American sports cars dating from the 1930s until the 50s. Among the highlights are the Lans um, Lancia Aprilia from 1937s until 1949, the only one of its kind in Thailand, the Triumph TR3A, 1955-1962, a light and swift English sports car, the Ford Thunderbird, 1955, a large four-seat American sports, the Jaguar MK5, um, 1948-1951, the post-war fifth prototype of the Jaguar Saloon series, and of course the Triumph 100 um, one, one, 1,800 Roaster, which is from 1946 until 1949, a classic English convertible four-door saloon with extra seats. In addition, there will be rare antique and classic cars such as those from the antique era before 1904, the veteran era 1905 until 1918, the vintage era 1919 until 1930, the pre-war classic era 1931 until 1945, and the post-war classic era 1946 until 1960. And admission is free. More details, call 029580011. Oh, I should take my dad there. We are actually vintage car lovers. We actually love cars and we should go and have a look, right? All right, some updates from, of course, right here, Thailand Today. And I have all the channels for you right here. So if you haven't followed us or liked us, we have Facebook, Thailand Today. We have Twitter, Thailand Today underscore. And of course, YouTube and our Instagram is Thailand2, number, the number two and day. So if you haven't subscribed or haven't followed us on any of those social media accounts, please do. We have updates about Thailand for you guys to um, look forward to, to find out whatever it is. It might be about culture, economies, or things that you can do during the weekends in other provinces. If you're going to Pattaya, we still have updates for what you can do during the weekends as well. It's just, you know, so you not get you don't get bored and you get the chance to travel and explore Thailand to your heart's desire. Anyways, um, some updates right here. So Hua Hin and Chiang Mai is, um, are the top destinations for retirees. Hua Hin and Chiang Mai provinces are ranked in the top 10 best places to retire in Asia, according to US News and World Report. According to the report, factors taken into account included cost of living, weather and medical care, all of which were favourable in both Hua Hin and Chiang Mai. The report also mentioned that Chiang Mai offered a mix of traditional Thailand alongside mega malls, multinational grocery grocery and department stores, whereas Hua Hin is known as a popular coastal resort town with good weather all year round and a large foreign community. Okay, some more updates right here. ST, NSTDA and Thai Board of Trade to help Thai SMEs. The National Science and Technology Development Agency, or NSTDA, and the Thai Board of Trade is joining hands to help Thai SME entrepreneurs in fruit and vegetable industry groups by establishing the Thai Gap 2-in-1 standard of fruit and veg vegetable certification. <coughs> Excuse me. Entrepreneurs will no longer have to apply for the Thai Gap certification of the Thai Board of Trade separately from the QGAP certification of the Department of Agriculture. Under the new system, the Thai Gap and QGAP will be combined to increase convenience in requesting standard certification. Entrepreneurs will be able to apply for the Thai Gap 2 in 1 inspection through the 2 in 1 Gap platform service application. The initiative will also serve to increase competitiveness and foster consumers' confidence in Thai agricultural products. All right, 
Thailand pose to upgrade its services. Thailand Post is investing 50 million baht to upgrade its air mail delivery system and to launch the world's first regulated postal authority at the mail center in Suwarnapoom Airport. The mail center meets international security standards and is certified by the Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand, or CAAT, in accordance with requirements prescribed by the International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO. Now, this move is aimed to facilitate operational management in terms of security standards at the airport and to ensure timelier air mail delivery. It also ensures stability and safety for air mail deliveries. So hooray, that's a good thing, right? Some updates from the ministry before I go. Now, the Royal Thai Embassy in Kuwait joined the Thai Muslim community in Kuwait to celebrate Eld al Friti. On June the 5th, 2019, the Royal Thai Embassy in Kuwait hosted a gathering, gathering of around 60 members of the Thai Muslim community in Kuwait at the embassy's premises on the occasion of Al Dafriti. At the event, Ambassador Nai Dusit, sorry, Mr. Dusit Menapan congratulated the Thai Muslim community on the occasion and wished them happiness and good health. Our participants later enjoyed lunch together. The Elder Freed is a celebration of the end of the Ramadan, the holy month of Muslims around the world. All right, and on also on May the 28th, um, Her Excellency Mrs. Uri Rajarento, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Thailand to Czech Republic, attended the opening ceremony of the Horika 112 Congress 2019 at the Aqua Palace Exhibition Hall, Aqua, Ho ha Aqua Palace Hotel, Prague. Horika Congress is one of the most important hotel, restaurant and service events in the Czech Republic. This year, Thai trade office Prague participated in the event by inviting Czech companies importing Thai products and investing in food and service sector to promote various kinds of Thai authentic, authentic products. As Thailand is one of the golden partners of the Congress for this year, Ambassador gave an opening remarks focusing on the high and unbeatable quality of Thai ingredients, Thai fruits and services. The Ambassador also visited Thai booths where Czech importers collectively promote various Thai ingredients and products, namely cooking sauce, jasmine rice, coconut, beer and Thai massage. In addition, cooking demonstration of Thai dishes by the gold medal winners of Pattaya City Culinary Cup 2012, Czech chefs were also performed at the main stage of the exhibition hall. All right, about two minutes to go. I have fun facts right here. So you can actually major in wine at Cornell University. I'm not sure if that's true, but I haven't checked. I can go check because it would be an, a very, very interesting course to take, you know, what do you do? You just sample wine and kind of write about them, their taste and their aroma, I guess, and how they were made. Speculate. They are a lot theorized about how they were made, what kind of grapes were chosen for it. It could be kind of fun. It could. I think it could be, you know, an elect, um, a course elective as well. So we'll see. I don't know. I'll check it out and I'll let you guys know. It should be a fun course, huh? And of course, ending quotes. The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. So this is from Mark Twain and in a sense. So if you don't have any purpose in life, you don't know why you were born. So he's saying that if you, once you're born, you should find out your purpose in life and what you should do. Um, and I guess in a sense, he's telling you to do the best that you can do in this life because life is short, like I've always said. So be sure to do that and enjoy life. Um, at the as best as you can okay all right and that's it that's all i have for you today i'll see you again next week have a great week and if you do want to comment and say hi be sure to write to me i am siddiq sabra from yad and this is news news and views the address is 443 rama 6 road rashatewi district bangkok thailand 10400 all right that's it see you again next week have a great week sweaty hat